I remember when I bombed my Microsoft interview. The software engineer asked me a question about pointers and memory allocation. I barely understood it during class, so I knew nothing about it during the interview. You should never feel bad about bombing a software engineer interview. Why? I remember working with some staff engineers at my previous company. These were the engineers architecting our entire system. They were not just technically excellent, but they were very good at people management and getting people to collaborate. And they both talked about how they hated the interview process and how it made them terribly anxious. These are people that you love to work with. I mean, these are the engineers you want to have on your team. And that made me realize how flawed the interview process was. If these engineers were having a problem with it, the rest of us were not safe. Hello, my name is Chisum and I'm here to talk about why you should not feel bad about bombing a software engineer interview. Once you've been behind the curtain and you've seen the interview process, you realize that you could get rejected for a job for lots of different reasons. There was an entire funnel and anywhere in the funnel, something wrong could happen. And these reasons could be so many other things apart from your technical skill and talent. So what are the different steps in the software engineer process? The first thing is that a candidate applies or somebody refers them to the company. This means that the individual is in the system and their resume is available to not just the recruiter, but the team looking for a hire. Then the different resumes are filtered through a software that basically checks keywords to make sure that the role and the skills of the candidate match up. Therefore, it's very possible for your resume to never have actually been read by a human. If you make it through that step, then your resume is seen by the recruiter for that team. If it looks like a good match, you then have your recruiter interview. This is when you have a conversation with the recruiter to make sure that your expectations of the role and what the requirements of the role are actually match up. Once you've gone through that, you have your first technical interview with somebody on the team or with an engineer in the org, if it's a very large org. Then you have your second technical interview with somebody in the org. If you make it past this point, this is when you'd have your on-site interview. Pre-COVID, the on-site actually used to be on-site. You used to fly in for the interview. That was so ghetto. Like, how did we used to fly so many candidates in? Post-COVID, a lot of times, the on-site interview is just an entire day of Zoom calls where you have different interviews. The four interviews you have on that day are another technical interview, a system design interview or architecture interview, a manager interview, and then a team member interview. After every interview, it is required that the interviewer provide an assessment as soon as possible. Once the assessment is put in, there is often a scale from strong hire to strong reject across different metrics. So it could be technical skill, collaborative, thoughtfulness at the end of it if you're a strong hire across the board then you are most likely going to be given an offer if you're somewhere in between this is when the team actually has to deliberate and people have to come and make a case for you the person who strongly recommends you has to make a case for you and the person who strongly rejects you has to explain why and if you're a strong reject you're you're obviously rejected so this shows you that the entire pipeline is so complex and has so many different steps that you can be rejected for lots of different things. Also know when you're applying to a tech company, they actually want to hire you. Let me explain. It takes a lot of engineering hours to prep for an interview, have the actual interview, put in your review of the interview, and then deliberate to see if this is a candidate that has conflicting reviews. Because it takes so many engineering hours, Everybody would actually like to get a good candidate at the end of this. Going to every interview, understanding that the interviewer does not want you to fail. If you are an excellent candidate, they would want to work with you. And this should give you the courage and deep conviction to come in with more enthusiasm. And know that if you didn't get the job, it wasn't because of militia. They would actually have loved to hire you. It's just that maybe for the role or the circumstance, or maybe due to anxiety, you just did not perform your best. Take the pressure off yourself and even the interviewer and put it on the circumstance. Sometimes rejection is actually good. The founder of WhatsApp was actually rejected by Facebook and Twitter before he founded WhatsApp. Take every rejection with a deep understanding that a better company, a better opportunity is waiting for you. Eventually, the founder of WhatsApp ends up selling WhatsApp to Facebook. So imagine he could have actually just been a random IC working on some button on Facebook, but he ended up building WhatsApp. Lastly, bad interviews are a learning process. At the beginning of your interview process, it's actually recommended that you interview with some companies that you never hope to work for. That way you can get through the anxieties of interviewing without losing out on some companies that you think better align with who you want to be. Use a bad interview as an opportunity to understand where you are currently at and areas that you could improve on. Knowing fully well that you might not even work on anything that you were interviewed on. A lot of times, the things you are interviewed on have no bearing on your actual day-to-day -day work. Use this as an opportunity to better learn how to manage your anxieties and to improve on your skills. Knowing fully well that a bad interview is no indication on your technical know-how, but just an assessment of a situation. I know that that assessment could always be improved upon in the coming years. My name is Chisum and I will see you all next time.